There are an estimated 2.1 million farms in America. Everything from corn to soybeans to, well, you name it. But Michelle Sagona just visited a one-of-a-kind farm and she's here now to tell us all about it. Yeah, Matt, one-of-a-kind is an understatement. I flew out to Tennessee to visit a place that's been dubbed the Body Farm. A body decomposing in the trunk of a car. A human skull in the woods nearby. Bones scattered all over the ground. But you won't find any evidence markers or police tape here. This is no crime scene. Anyone who ends up in this place does so willingly. We have over 3,000 pre-donors, people who have willed their body to the program while they're still alive. And what exactly is the Body Donation Program? The Body Donation Program is a way that individuals all across the country can donate their bodies directly to us to be used for scientific research and training. Welcome to the Forensic Anthropology Center at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville, AKA the Body Farm. The Body Farm was a term coined and used in a Patricia Cornwell book that she wrote after coming here and working with Dr. Bass, and that's become the public moniker of the uh, facility. That's Dr. Bass, as in William M. Bass, the pioneer scientist who founded the center in 1980. His name immortalized outside the state-of-the-art lab run by current director, Dr. Donnie Stedman. We are in a secret location. We are. We don't advertise where the facility is. Crime Watch Daily getting unprecedented access and a private look at the ways investigators hone their forensic insights. People donate their bodies to the body farm and then the forensic team plants them in the ground so the scientists can see the effects of the weather on the bones. One of the things that you'll notice is that there's a lot of scattering of the remains. This is exactly what we see in forensic cases as well. Human remains that are on the, just deposited on the surface of the ground are, can be scattered by wind, can be scattered by rain, especially if it's on a slope. The rain will come down the slope and it'll scatter the bones. And animals are another major source of, of uh, scattering the bones. After the team studies how the bones are scattered, they collect them and take them inside to the laboratory where they lay them out. This is how we lay out a forensic case. We lay it in anatomical position. You have all the right bones on the right and the left bones on the left. All the ribs are sequenced into the right order. So that way, if I have a pathology or a trauma on a bone, I know right away this is my left radius. That's your left one. The work done in this lab could mean the difference in identifying a killer or giving identity to a John Doe. If I compare these two long bones here, but these are the right and left femur, and you can see this is kind of a straight and smooth shaft. Do you see on the other one, you have that area of expansion there. That probably indicates um, is it broken at one point? It could have been broken, but it doesn't go all the way around. So it could have been a, a local trauma to this area that caused a little bit of bone growth okay. there. But again, if we had x-rays of somebody who was missing that fit the biological profile, we, could, we could determine if this might be that person or not. Let's say that there are some remains that are found in a certain stage of decomposition, and law enforcement has a, a suspect. And the suspect says, oh, you think he died three weeks ago? Well, three weeks ago, I was in, in England. And I wasn't even in the area. And so that person has an alibi for that time period. But if we can scientifically say, no, we think that it was more than three weeks ago, now that individual is, could be a suspect again. And so even just those weeks matter yeah. in terms of how a case proceeds. He's seen together skeletons and cold cases just another day at the office for some of America's most unique crime fighters. It's really fascinating what you do here. Thank you, we think so. 